zawodnik galopu konia na stacjonarnej do czołówce i tam jest dystans 11,1. Wysokość 155, 155, 155. To, co najtrudniejszego z tym szeregu, to jego kolorystyka. Gładkie, drogi, najpierw żółte, potem granatowe i na końcu pomarańczowe, bo to kolory lotto. Let's go on to triple combination. We start with the vertical 155, then officer 150, and the vertical again 155. What is important again are colors. We start with the yellow, then blue, and then orange. Dalej lewy łuk i przychodzący bardzo szybko po 8 lub 7 drogach galopu konia. Kolejny bardzo szeroki okser. Okser Longin. Wysoki na 150 i podobnie jak Polski Związek Jeziewski rozpięty na 170 cm. na wysokości 150 cm. Nawet leciutkie muśnięcie tej przeszkody będzie powodowało zrzutkę. Well, now we are at obstacle number 11. It's a vertical and do you see these planks? Are really little, are really short and are upstairs wide. It means that there is a big possibility that horses will make a mistake at this point because it's very easy to make a knockdown on this obstacle. Już ten dzień nam dają sygnał, że musimy kończyć. Prawy łuk do rowu z wolą. Jak najszybciej trzeba konia wyprostować. Tutaj będzie cały dystans na 8 lub 9 kroków galopu konia, ale ważne w tym zadaniu, żeby nie ścinać to the next round and here is a look at uh, who is competing here and uh, there's some high class riders number 14 will be Niels Brunsels from Belgium Shane Sweetnam also he's been on the globe trotting mission of light Francois Matty from Junior representing a strong group of Belgian riders who of course won the Nations Cup here 12 months ago Bertram Allen is number 25 then have a little break while they redo the course James Wilson double clear recently he's the sole British representative and uh, some of the other names here Paul O'Shea with a strong part of the strong Irish contingent Olivia Robert part of a strong French contingent will be number 38 Billy Toomey here from Ireland and then Peter Devos uh, from Belgium on flash a promising horse and uh, finally Daniel Doyser on a very intriguing 10 year old Yasmin Bishop will be last to go so that is our field and a strong field it is and uh, here is uh, well it's a little breezy but gentle zephyr I think you probably call it in terms of the conditions here a really perfect afternoon it's not too hot so I think the conditions as near perfect as you could expect and here is the course that uh, Simon Talent has designed his first five stars start with a, a spread 150 then they cut back to number two which is an upright at 155 round then to a vertical uh, with a spread of 160 22 and a half meters to the four so that might just uh, catch a few out uh, a large upright at 155 round then to uh, six uh, rather five which is a big spread 140 to uh, 150 160 over then to the upright which is at 160 that will maybe again as they then come round to the top of the arena uh, near the in gate for the comp double uh, with a uh, well, one stride then back on for eight which is again a big spread 185 155 then to the combination which uh, is uh, in front of the hospitality area here uh, one stride followed by two strides last part at 155 the middle part with a spread of 160 then round to 10 with another big spread at 170 that's number 10 moving on round again back on to 11 157 for this upright then to the water and then it's a charge down to the final upright, the Longines upright, and that is set at 160. 
and the allotted time is 78 seconds. 515 meters is the length of this particular course. As I say, 78 seconds. And the way this competition works, we have 50 starters, and 25% of the field will progress through. And uh, so that's the way it works, and time allowed. So a little bit of people will be conscious of the time, but uh, it really will be a question of seeing how many clears that we do get to hey, there's a lot of not saying combinations that are coming to this level for the first time so it's going to be intriguing how they go here this afternoon here in Sopot but uh, also we do have some experienced combinations as well so the mix is likely to be an intriguing one here this afternoon there is the in gate the first of the riders will be coming in very shortly and uh, we will have 25, then a break, and then a further 25. Then there will be another break before they get ready for the uh, final round. And uh, some hats at the ready uh, for this crowd. And the first rider will be coming in very shortly. And it will be Alexis Derube from France on board his 12-year-old Grey Gelding, Timon Dour. And this, as I say, could set the tone. They're an experienced combination who went well 12 months, well, last uh, year at the World Equestrian Games. But uh, gearing up, we had a competition here yesterday. They had a qualifying competition to uh, set and get everybody ready. And uh, yesterday, a good competition it was too. And the first rider is just now coming into the arena. And there is Alexis Derube. And let's see what he does and how he approaches this. A big moment for the course designer has designed the show jumping phase when they had the European Eventing Championships here uh, a couple of years back at Stregom and he will be designing the Pony Championships, the European Championships later on in the year as well here in Poland. So, uh, former show jumper, but has worked his way up the grades and uh, let's see what kind of course he presents. The speaking to him says it's one or two tricky little bits, but relatively straightforward was the initial reaction. Let's see if that is the case as Alexis begins this Longing Grand Prix. Time. 78 seconds is the time allowed. Just checking up into the uh, four and it's making so far it all looking straightforward. This is a nice expansive arena. That's the big spread. Now coming to the double pops that very comfortably. So you turn back to the next fence, number eight. Now to the combination at nine. Thank you. Me uh, you okay. Very easy with this horse. He was also part of the French team on home side at the ball earlier this year. Checking in, just with the brush of that final. That's the time, just outside the time, 58 seconds. But in terms of jumping, it looks relatively straightforward. But one time for so, whether that time might be holding back. And a very smooth round of jumping, but just not quite good enough. It's a great time, 78 seconds. Well, the next rider's in the arena from Italy. It's Massimo Crosato, 44-year-old, riding Lazzaro della Schiave, a 10-year-old Bay Gelding. Last year they were second in the league. Let's see how he begins his round. Rider number two.
having too many problems, just having to check into that. got a little close so and always oh, making a right hash of the uh, combination just lost all rhythm and uh, had two parts down being brushed the time just got a little too close and then was out of kilter from there on in costly mistakes there at eight at nine rather there's two down jumping the water the final fence and the time again, outside the time, so nine for Massimo Grazata. Yes, getting the combination wrong now from Brazil. 44-year-old Brazilian competing at the most difficult Calvary is Luis Felipe de Azevedo Fio. 12-year-old Chestnut Gelder, here is Van der Rombatsterhofer. So, see how he gets on in the negotiate. So, time just looking a little bit of an issue at the moment amongst the early first two starters. spread see the time possibly being an issue here clear at the moment is Coming now to the final fence. You see plenty of time for us there. Has come in at 83.7, 83.26, two time falls. So no, two jumping gears, but no clear inside the time. Rush through, but all stayed in the back. So early stages. Jelly Bay, our first competitor. Just on half a second outside the allotted time. Now, from Germany, Andre Team on Aretina, 11 year old Bay Gelding, is the horse that this German rider is on board and had a good Nations Cup at Calgary where. Jump double clear, although picked up one time penalty fault in the uh, second of those two rounds in that Nations Cup in Calgary last year. But he's riding Aretina. to it.
again, more time for us. So nine is the score for Andre's team. Time, 18.75, so nine penalties for the German rider. And Let's continue with the so far. Next up, though, coming in is So William Rev comes in, and he's on board. Sapira S, a 12-year-old competing in the Nations Cup and had two good runs, just time penalties on each of those runs, so jump clear, so obviously a horse that might expect to jump clear, but what about the time, that is the part that's catching us out so far. some of the first four competitors. Still will be quite close. Final fence. Oh, just frustrating. Just under a second outside the time. It's going to be quite a tricky one to get inside the time. But it's put him into second spot so far on the standings for William Rev. 78.86 was his time. Uh, the first rider to go, Alex Devil Bay, was 78.49. That is the three. Clear rounds, but none inside the time. On now to rider number six, and this is the first of the Polish riders. And it is the 30 year old Natalia Szczesnik, and she's riding a 10 year old Grey Gelding. And she is on her way. And this probably represents a bit of a step up in class for her. And as I say, already had one fence down, so part of the education process. Just trying to learn to jump at this level. And there are one or two in that category in this. And there's a point there, just refusing ducking out of what is a large spread, 160, just got it all wrong. Tidy and paying the penalty. And that's probably proof of the just a little bit of inexperience for this combination at this level. Settling and coming down to the combination. Actually, she got through fine. Oh, she's had one part down. Yes, the first part has gone down. Flick that down. So that's why she's got up to 16. Quite a challenge for Natalia. Certainly quite costly. With, uh, 28 penalties for her. Never really recovered from that early fence down. Now, 
from Russia. Young Russian writer, Igor Shibrik, Chiara, 11 year old Bay man. Competing at the European Juniors. Pretty well, too. So, again, this is another rider on the step up to the elite level. Let's see how this combination gets on. so far as if we'll be getting some time penalties as well and another fence done so quite a glossy round but it is all about gaining experience And now from Sweden, our next rider coming in. And this is Annika Nexelsen, as we just look at how that double went all very wrong for Eagle. Lost it after six and then was struggling to regain control. Trapped his way through the long jeans double. Now, Annika Axelsson. She is riding Diva Rosa, nine-year-old grey mare. Double. Just trying to keep the speed up because that is what's causing the problems in this course. So to check into the combination, and it's still clear. of going clear inside the time. And coming to it, yes, and looks as if we are going to see our first clear round inside the time. Uh, excellently judged round. A well-deserved pat there for Diva Rosa from Annika Axelsson, who becomes our first clear, ride, clear round inside the team time. So... The time is doable, although that's clearly the way Annick was writing that. There wasn't much room for let up, and she goes out there with a broad smile on her face. This 150,000 euro Longines Grand Prix. 
Another of the Brazilian contingent competing here in Poden is Pedro Junqueira Mulat, and he is riding another mare, a 12 year old bay mare, Ses Darica, is his mount. And they were competing in La Boule in the Nations Cup and had a fence down in each round. Have a fence down here, number three down. 25% of the field will go through to the second round. And sadly, no will not be joining that as he's had a lot down already. Three down through the double. That first part of the combination down. Yeah. And only a fraction outside the time. So it's a round that uh, finished with 17 penalty in that one time fault. But it was uh, an untidy start to the round that caused Pedro the problems. And it means that he will not be going forward now. Rider number 10 into the arena, another of the Polish riders. That is Krzysztof Ludwizek on Nordwit, the 13 year old stallion, a great stallion. And let's see how Nordwin can get on. And uh, competing in the Three Star Nations Cup, where they had a clear and one fence down that was recently. So let's see. Love to see a Polish Friday go clear. Since the word has got back out there that you need to go a little bit quicker, you can't take it easy. You've got to keep it going, keep your round at full tilt. And disappointing, there's a slight groan there from the crowd as the middle part went down at the treble. That's a shame. High fault and that one fence down uh, puts him currently into uh, fifth spot for Christoph there with uh, five penalties. So just the one clear round inside the time. We've had uh, four clear jumping rounds, three picking up time penalties. Alexis Delube and Willem Grave with one penalty each. And Louis Philippe does. The Asvedo Fio, he picked up two penalties for clear inside the time. So that is the 1, 2, 3, 4 at the moment. And again, Axelsen setting the pace. Now, another Polish rider coming in, riding a 10 year old grey gelding. Dakatan is the name of the horse. The name of the rider is Andres Oplotek. 21 year old, so again a chance to get some experience. Let's see how he gets on here. Clearly taking his time, he just wants to give him 
himself as much chance of trying to go clear. Down just now losing some of that early confidence. The final fence, and again, just five outside the time, so it is nine. Well, in fact, 13, say 13. So in the end, with that one time clock, three fences down. So 13 is the total for Andres of the Tech. And again, the 18 year old learning from that experience. A 21 year old, I should say. Now, from Latvia, we have Kristaps Neretnix on Moon Ray. Now, they had a good day yesterday because they won the qualifying competition. And they won it in good style yesterday. So, it's in confident mood. Really the competition yesterday. So, I'm hoping to build on that. Can they go clear again here? They're on their way. Pretty good form as well. Oh, they won a Grand Prix in Poznan not long ago. It's all pretty good at the moment. Well, let off timing wise, round about the mark. Ooh, just skewed into that, gets away with it. Flag stays down. What about the time? Ooh, got it wrong, but it's inside the time. So clear round number two, continuing the good form of yesterday. Kristaps Nelix of Latvia has gone the second clear round and actually the quickest of the round so far and Annika Axelson 77.09, 76.85 that had an impact on the, how it will work out in terms of the uh, next round in terms of the order but a good clear round nonetheless and showing what good form this horse has been in so next up from the Netherlands and it is Jordan Kuypers from the Netherlands went well at Olympia at the back end of last year finishing fourth in the Grand Prix on the final day of that show We expect this horse to go well here this afternoon. Right number 13 in this Longines Grand Prix. Plenty of clearance of the double. Just 
came down. So. Combination catching up that middle part. That was a trouble. Proving a difficult part of this course. Just an eight meter gap between those two fences. And the time is a very comfortably good one. I think it's the quickest round so far. But he has had the uh, one fence down, so sits into sixth spot at the moment. But very early stages, still very much in this particular launching Grand Prix. As 14 of the riders have now gone, and remember it's a 50 strong field. And now we have the first Irish rider coming in. And it is the globe trotting Irishman Shane Sweetnam, competing uh, in La Poule in the Nations Cup, and went pretty well there on his horse here. And that is Indra and de Uda Heihoff, an 11 year old grey mare. And as I say, Shane, based over in America, racks up the air miles. First part of the treble. Maybe irritated, I'm sure, by that. Surprised, and then he'd be bringing a pretty good round of jumping. And the time is a fast one. At the stake at 9A. That Shane Sweetham is four. And he goes into seventh spot with those four pennies at the time of 76.73. And the quickest, quickest of those on four at the moment is the Belgian rider Niels Rinsiels. The quickest time so far. Well, next into the arena from Brazil, Yuri Mansur on Carlson, 11 year old Gelding. Ninth in the World Cup of Korea has been competing in Shanghai as 11 year old. Early mistake. the water this is the final fence so it's a sharp time 
but didn't hang around. And uh, 77.31 is going to put him currently into uh, 10 actually. Another fence down. So there were two down. Which two he had there. there. You can see which one he had there. And Darren. So he goes into 10 spot. Uh, number 16, number 17. And uh, this is from Switzerland. 24 year old Swiss rider. A shot at Quincy. And this will be a, an education for this horse. I think this is the first time this horse will be competing at this level. Level this 11 year old man. Well, in fact, it is Wojciech Wojciech who is coming to the arena. So a change in the running order. Swiss rider Akani to take part. Pretty said early fence town has this Polish rider. 38 year old. Got another fence town. Time, but sadly, two fences down. Project, Project, A couple of fences down. Let's continue with the Norway down with number 19 of the Eurystar Mayors of Longy Grand Prix with the rider who was the winner of CSIO Three Stars and Drama this year is starting with Paris, which is read by Cantonis and Capital Two, Hege C. Tidemanton. In is now Hegesi Tidemanson from Norway on canvas, a 13 year old. Gray Gelding. Double clear at the Nations Cup recently. So Hege, she's on her way. Stays clear. So this is good so far. I to join the group of clears inside the time. So far, but one fence down, though it is four faults, and uh, so the seventh. So quick, but unfortunately, four, one fence down. 
Which is if it was the water that was the undoing of Hagen. That's the first person to have a problem there. Now it's from Austria, Roland Engelbrecht on the Vistos Corwini, a nine-year-old Ray Gelding. So, they, we're in this Garland Nations Cup, but they retired there. Roland will be 40 next week. to that level. That's a mistake. Now down to the treble. And he's never took off and fired that top pole out. Now I've just taken the foot off the accelerator. And I think may be retiring. Indeed, that is what's going on. Roland Engelbrecht retiring. Morton of Vista's call Weenie. And that was our uh, 20th, 19th rider. And then now with a field that's reduced to 49, you see uh, the double, and then it was the first part. So it was the double and the treble that caused Roland the problems for Roland Engel break. Now from the Netherlands, Kevin Joachims on Cristello is next in. 23 years of age, um, has taken over this fight since November of last year. Still a 12-year-old stallion. That's how the 23-year-old can get on here. Just a couple of clears inside the time in this two-round competition. Stand. Six is at one sixteen out of the double. Came down a bit steep on the final part of that double, but the poles was given a clobber, but can before him stayed in. from the young Dutch rider he goes clear just slower than Kevin Joachim uh, than uh, Christophs and at next time of 76.85 77 seconds dead for Kevin Joachim's um, one of now three clear rounds inside the time with three who were clear but picked up penalty points. Alex Derube, William Rev, uh, Louis Philippe, Desvede Fio. They picked up time penalties but were clear. It's almost as now that subsequent riders after the early one saw that the 78 seconds was quite a tight one. Definitely have to keep the gallop on as we move on to our next rider who is the experience, another of the talented group of Belgian riders. 
and it's Gudrun Petit. And riding Sea Coast Pebble Z. Um, was winning uh, a couple of classes last month, seventh in the World Cup in La Coruña. So this is a very consistent horse for Gudrun. with every round here that you've got to keep the gallop up. Got to keep the precision as well. Good test, this is proving. Pebbles is consistent, is quick too, and 75.38, that is clearly the quickest time by well over a second, and she didn't brush a fence, I don't think, any way through, an excellent round from Gudrun Petit, so we now have four clear rounds inside the time, and they will be safely through to the next round. And will this man join them? The, another Belgian rider, got three Belgian riders in a row, Francois Matty Jr. on Uno de la Roc. And they were competing in the World Cup finals in Gothenburg. Had a very successful camp, consistent indoor campaign, then a bit of a break and were competing in Saint-Tropez last week. That was a little too exuberant at the start of the round. I lost some of the accuracy. That's a three. Also, six is down. And just looking as if it's not quite happened. And the refusal there. Are you going to continue? Our horse doesn't look as if it's in a going day at the moment. So a little disappointing. This is a so, an elimination, so disappointing. Not a going day for a horse that, as I say, has been very consistent for France Romandie Junior, not today. So another Belgian rider though does come in, and it is Yves van der Hassel. And riding Jeunesse, a 10-year-old mare. Part of the team which finished third in the Nations Cup at Rome. Opened up with 13 volts, but then picked up much better in the second round to help that third place with just one time penalty faults in that second round in the Piazza di Siena in Rome. Down, so fence down.
Yeah. So the final fence. And the time penalty falls to be added. The one time penalty. <laughs> added. <laughs> and <laughs> so finishing on 81.10. So won't be lining up in the next round with Gudrun Petit, Christoph Nerdnix, Kevin Joachims and Annika Axels, the four clear rounds. We've got the final round before we have a little mini break. Bert from Allen, highly talented Irish rider. And he is riding Harley Vidi Bishop, a 12 year old gelding. Used to be ridden by Nicola Philippart. And now it's the ride of Bertram Allen. Let's see if he can become clear round number five of this, the 24th rider to go. second on this time that has proved tight for many. This brush is the final part of the trouble. But this horse is good travelling well. and the time is going to be safely negotiated 77.36 so Bertram Allen does become the um, does become the fifth clear round but actually now coming into the arena is the uh, rider who I thought was going to be coming earlier but it looks like Bayshock is now coming into the arena to be the final rider of the uh, before we have the break but a good round from Bertram Allen as he uh, leaves the arena he made that look pretty effortless so and it's Quincy Devil for Faye Shock as she's now on her way coming in and the 34 year old first time for this horse at this level as I say I think Good start for the round there. Oh, the big upright. to her and keeps it going. Time may be a little tight. All the same, this is a good round of jumping. Water and one more. Not right to negotiate. Back the time is well inside. <laughs> so that's an excellent round. Uh, sure. And uh, nicely judged man. Excellent. Made it actually look so easy, just very sweetly. And uh, looks absolutely delighted with that effort to be one of the six clear rounds with another 25 competitors to go. Some very experienced and talented riders to come, including Daniel Dorsa, he will be last. Uh, Roger Eve Boss will be amongst those to go. Billy Toomey 
talented riders and some interesting combinations. But uh, looking at the leaderboard so far, it's good from Patrick, Fair Shock, Kristaps Snodnyx, Kevin Jokums, Annika Axelsen, and Bert Romano. The six clear of the 25 riders who've gone through. Um, it's a 25% group who go through to the next run. So uh, we'll take a short break while they just uh, give the course uh, a little bit of a, a harrow before they restart. It'll be about five minutes for part two of the first run in a few minutes' time. Very important announcement to all of the riders. The show of the today will be open only until 7.30, so at half past seven, the show of will be closed. Well, the case, make your entries for the narrow classes as soon as it's possible, so you will be lucky and you will get Kelby also tomorrow, if you will make your entry until 7.30. Thank you. As a title partner and official timekeeper of the series Anthology, it's proud to be associated with the Lonji and the identity agents that are common in Soto. Lonji's passion for investment world dates back to 1869. Today, the brand is involved in the most important investment events all over the world. The official launch here in Soto is a new model of the iconic Hydro Quest collection.
Państwo i oto rozpoczynamy drugą część konkursu Grand Prix o Puchar Lonzin. Już za chwilę zobaczymy drugie część już po prawej liście startowej. And welcome back. We're off and running now for the second part of the first round of this Longines Grand Prix. If you're just joining us, catch up with the details so far. Six riders clear inside the time. Quickest of them, Gudrun Petit. And this is a two-round competition with 25% of them going into the next round. At the moment, six clear. So, time proved a little bit stiff earlier on, but I think then the rest of the field realise that this is a galloping course that requires a certain degree of precision. And this course designed by Simon Talent, Polish designer, first time he's designing at this level. But has designed many courses at significant championships, including the jumping phase of the European Championships, which were in Stregon back in 2017. But we're watching the Polish rider Radoslaw Zalewski and he competed in this last year and came away with 13 faults on this horse. Latina is the horse that he is riding. Couple of fences down so far, this 11 year old being there, and unfortunately, she's refused. We see well, Francois Matty had a problem at this fence, and he too has had a problem. I don't know whether that's going to be the end. I think it is. Well, next coming into the arena is the young British rider, the sole British representative, James Wilson, 11 year old bay mare, Imagine de Muse, he's riding. Well, he had a fabulous time in St. Gallen when he went double clear in the Nations Cup. He's come here as a wild card. He was delighted to get the opportunity to come and ride here. And it could be a breakthrough year with him and this horse. Obviously hoping to compete at other Nations Cup. Maybe on Hemsall and Hickston. And obviously the European Championships might be, might be considered an outside before if he continues to show that kind of form. So this might just be again a significant chance for him to throw down a markup based in the West Country in the UK. This horse an 11 year old there. Four years of age. <laughs> Curve run through to that fence, number six from five. Now to the double. Hopefully through that. Got to keep it going. We're seeing one or two now realizing the gallop on between the fences. He's quite as smooth as he would like. And he's 
still clear out of the waters. Got to kick on a little bit. Should be all right. Comes to the final fence. Is he going to be clear round number seven? And he is clear round number seven. He's clear round number seven inside the time. And that is excellent from James Wilson, considering his good 2019. So he's through seven of riders, but just inside the time, 77.72, the lowest of the, the slowest of those clear inside the time. Okay, on now to the next rider, and it's from Brazil, Karina Johan Peter, Casper, a 60-year-old girlie, one of the oldest horses in this competition. Six is down now to the double. Now, so for Karina Johan Peter, a couple of time penalties to be added to that one fence down, so it's six for her. At the moment, on the 12th on the standings, it's Hegan Peter Manson, who had one fence down. She's in 12th. Neil Seals looks as if he won't be lining up and it's just a question of um, how many clears and will the ones with time penalties be going through to the next round the quickest of those with time penalties will be if it's inside the 25 percent mark he will go through now next rider from chile it's rodrigo carrasco and he is riding a 12-year-old gelding, Acapulco. And they were competing at the World Cup final in Gothenburg and at the World Equestrian Games last year in Tryon. So on that basis, you would think this horse might be finding a way through. Final fence, and that is down, so it's 17 for Rodrigo Carrasco. Great day for him. Well, 17 penalties for Rodrigo, 81.83 seconds. Puts him well down the field. 
Next though, very young horse, nine-year-old. And the rider is Marc de Lassa, 41-year-old Frenchman. Rider number 30 coming in. And into the arena. And this could be quite interesting to see how they get on here. This nine-year-old stallion. And he's on his way, jumping that first fence. Stand way off that, it clears it magnificently. because the clear rounds, if there are more than 12 clears, it will be done on time. Well, somehow got through it. Oh, we've had it done. So the way it's shaping up at the moment, anyone with a fence down, they can forget it. There's so many still to go, so many good combinations to go, but those clear, remember we've got seven, there'll only be 12 who will go through to the next round, even if you've gone clear. So the quickest will be the ones to go through. But in the end, that was a costly run for Mark de Lassa, but bearing in mind that he's riding a nine-year-old, it's fully understandable. But uh, he has finished there with a quick time, but had three fences. But definitely a horse one for the future. Very nice-looking horse, but a little bit of inexperience showed through there. Now, just 22 years, years of age is this Austrian rider, and it is Marianne Schindler, who is riding acoustic solo du Balubé, and has been competing quite a lot at three-star level, and unfortunately has not the first fence star. That's dispiriting, challenging enough track anyway. Have the first fence done. But a confidence boosting round it might be if can continue to uh, jump the, in the way he has done since that she has done since that first mistake. Good since that mistake at the first fence for Marianne. Galling, I think, is the best way of describing that, although she has now had 11 down. Time is a very quick one, but those two fences <laughs> maybe just a little too quick, but she looks pretty pleased with that route. But a couple of mistakes, just looking back over them. And there is that one that uh, came at 11. So, seven clear rounds. 12 will go through to the next round. Currently in 12, still Egerted Amansen from Norway. That inevitably is going to change. But the riders may be looking anxiously at what's going to be happening over the uh, next uh, half an hour or so. Alexis Delube was first to go. He picked up one penalty fault with a 78.49. William Grev from the Netherlands, 78.86. But James Wilson, the slowest of the clear round so far, the British rider was 77.72. Seven clear. On now to our next rider, and it is Simon Delestre and uh, on Ushela de Will and Commonwealth World number one and at the second and the Hong Kong Grand Prix a few weeks back and 
when Rome they had one fence down in the first run, clear in the second, so in good form. The world number 15 in the Longines rankings is Simon de Lest. I probably expect him to go clear. And look at him, he might turn quite short around from the 7 to 8. going to be clear round number eight and his time of 76.89 is the fourth quickest and that should I think, guarantee his what up oh, in fact he's um Simon de Lest, in fact, one fence down. That's where it must have been the water that he just had one down. As they went to inspect and they put it so frustrating for Simon de Lest because the judges went over and had a look and he just must have trailed a leg in that. So that's disappointing for Simon de Lest to have that mistake at the end. It would be very good and the time was good. So still seven clear. Now from China. It is Yu Zhang, and been competing on the uh, competing in the Shanghai Global Champions Tour and riding Caesar, the young 18-year-old, and he is on this 10-year-old gelding. Actually, three is down. Deeply in the first part. Two fences down so far. Still managed to find a way to get over it, but time for the penalty added. Nine for Yu Zhang of China and Caesar. Uh, so down the field into 24th, I think it is. The early mistakes and then the uh, double is coming down. There's not quite enough momentum into that to help the horse clear that fence. And the 18 year old. Now it's a birthday boy coming in. It's get it Nyberg. Birthday, uh, well, birthday uh, last week. The 11th of June for the 26-year-old. He's riding Contagio. Is the German rider. Now they were competing for Germany in the Rome Nations Cup, and uh, father was a two-time team gold medalist for Germany. Back in 96 and 2000. The talented genes have been passed on because Garrett, just 26 years of age, been riding well. And here he is riding Contagio, a 15 year old stallion. Looking to become clear round number eight inside the time. towards eight after the double. Looks 
like he's got him in foot in the water. The flag's gone up, so that is disappointing. <laughs> the Aston given enough impulsion towards the water at the time as well. So five penalties for Gellert Nyberg, 79.20. 17th spot currently and uh, will not be taking any further part. So at the moment, Hegarty de Manson sits still in 12th spot. But plenty of high-class combinations to come, including... Devos, Doyser, Bost, Billy Toomey, and now from Brazil, uh, rather from, not from Brazil, from Switzerland, it's Arthur de Silva, a 40-year-old Swiss rider, and he is on in on stop of Antti Vorhoff, an 11-year-old stallion who was second in the Grand Prix at St. Gaal recently. So can they find a way to go one better here today in a glorious late afternoon here in Sopot? Wonderful conditions. Pretty miserable day yesterday for the qualifying round. Thunderstorms, but that's all passed through. Arthur carries on his way. And he's clear around now. Fine at the water. What about the time? Looks as if he's just gone outside. So it'd be anxious times now because one of now for one penalty point, and that's going to put him in tenth for the Swiss rider. 79.07. 12 go through. Means that Heger to Manson now drops out of those going forward to the second round. Niels Brinsiels is in 12th currently. We have seven clears, but it's 12 who will go through. So, next though, 42 year old from Ireland, it is Paul O'Shea. Not like so many, another American-based Irishman. And Paul O'Shea, 42-year-old, on his way here. Bertram Allen is one of his compatriots, one of the clear rounds. Imagine Ireland might be hopeful of lifting the Nations Cup here on Sunday. We'll be bringing to you here on FEI TV. One fence down for Paul. Two fences down, sadly, now. Fence and the time is a quick one, but again, a little bit of in this, well, not in decision, but I suppose it would, not enough accuracy when required, despite going quite quick. So, a couple of fences down. So, Paul O'Shea's day is done as far as this Grand Prix is concerned. Comes him into 22nd spot currently. Now, next up, 
It is Jens van Groensven from the Netherlands. He has six silver medals from European Championships. So, 2016 in Sweden, 2014 in Arad. So, he's riding for Netherlands today with Chica. So, Chica is the horse that he is riding. It is his birthday today. It's the 14th of June. And uh, he's 23 today. significance of trying to be quick and you've got to be consistently quick around this course it's the overriding impression Inside the time, well inside the time. That is excellent. That was economically quick. And excellent. 75 point. Uh, just to confirm the time. 74.89, and that is the quickest time. It, it was effortless. Very smoothly done by Jens van Grinsman, the birthday boy, because he has gone quicker than Belgium's Gudrun Petit, who did the quickest before, 75.38, so eight now clear inside the time. James Wilson, I'm sure, will be looking anxiously at wondering what's going to happen over the remaining riders. We're rider number 38, so I'm sure it could be, particularly with the quality of these last group of riders, Olivier Robert and uh, is next in. This is another Good performer at this level. And Olivia Robert is on Tempo de Papa, a 12 year old gelding. Let's put some good some solid performance at the Grand Prix level now. Good competing in the World Cup indoor competition. And you can see that speed is. Definitely on his mind. <laughs> Coaxing Tempo de Pavan through the treble. No mistake at the moment. Final fence, and this is another sharp time. 75.68, and that makes them Olivier Robert's time the third quickest. James Wilson now is nine, so as I say, I'm sure he's going to be anxiously checking and wondering whether he will be required for action again. And maybe Bertram Allen will be thinking, Will I be? going in the second round on 77.36 but uh, good round from Olivier Robert on Tempo de Papa now from Norway Victoria Gullickson is on Papa Roach and took this ride over from Lauren Hoff in August of last year road so this 10 year old gelding in St. Gallen in the Nations Cup. And went pretty well. So, can Victoria find a way of going to? She starts her round. And she's on her way now.
never got it right there. He just felt that was trying to work hard to keep the horse settled going into that combination. And the result, though, absolutely sent to the ground. So it's not going to be for her. And jumps the last inside the time, 27.47. So dis disappointing for her. That first part of the double down. Just lost a little bit of control going into it, and as a result, never was able to get the horse properly presented as a result has had a fence down so Billy Toomey though next in the Irish rider and he is on board Shat Bot, an 11 year old stallion he co-owns with Sue Davis. Also, you get the feeling he's bringing on to try and uh, he's hoping to find a way to get to the top level with this horse, the Irish Olympian. Good so far. Trying to keep the speed up. Uh, it's the handbrake off going into that one. Now to 11. Oh, does not want the water. And he did say to me, this might have a bit of water trouble with this horse. And clearly, that's what's happened. Just didn't want to know about the water. Spooked. Not every horse likes the water. Let's see if we can get a horse to have another go. It does, but that's disappointing. So, in the end for Billy Toomey. The water just didn't want to know. And he'll be not too pleased with that. Just, just turning around towards it and just didn't want to know and see they're presenting so unfortunately for Billy Toomey 10 penalties there 98.56 so, and uh, it's a little rueful as he goes past my commentary position so Arthur De Silva is the rider currently sitting in 12th spot. He had one penalty added to his score, finishing the time of 79.07. As we now come to the final group of riders, Bart Bless is the next one coming in. Another of the Dutch contingent here, riding an 11-year-old mare, Israel Wiede Denehove. been globe-trotting with this horse, been to Mexico, Shanghai and Hamburg and has been performing pretty creditably too, so what can the 38-year-old Dutch rider do here? Kevin Jokums is in so far from a Dutch perspective. So is Jens van Grunsven with the quickest time of 74.89. Not 
by no means going as quick and now has had a fence down so tells you that his job is done he's no chance now so he's just trying to get in a little bit of a practice run and lost a little bit of impulsion going through the treble Fences down. Eight. Four. Bless. And his horse is well. He's at a half. And see where the half fence down. Flicking it on its way through and then another fence down at the uh, combination. Right now, rider number 42 coming into the arena is from Poland, the last of the Polish riders. And I'm sure the crowd here, which has increased as this competition has gone on, probably many of you might have just popped along here after the working day. And Jan Bobek is the rider. And he is riding Chaco Amikor. He's been putting in some good solid performances this young rider with this horse It'll be a big cheer if he does go clear but he's got to be mindful of the time going so far so good I've just three more to negotiate what about the time that's going to be the key aspect now just checking towards the water oh no oh the groans you could hear there disappointing the red flag going up at the water so for Jan Bobic well, they were hoping that it was the water that caught Jan Bobig out. Just didn't stretch enough. And he will be very disappointed with that. It was a quick time too, 75.78. It was effortlessly quick as well, but just not quick enough through the water. That cost. So we're now getting to the final group. I think it's uh, rider number 43. And it is from Germany, Patrick Stuhlmeier, riding Parehoka de Temple, a 10 year old stallion. Yeah, and also, again, so he's a horse, though, that stepping up the grades, bringing his horse on. so chance today to further enhance this, this horse's burgeoning reputation. so far through seven. Quick time 
And it is a very good time indeed from Patrick Schoolmeyer. As he has raced round to produce one of the quickest of the day so far. And has come through with 75.03, and that's the second quickest run. And positive riding, but calmly executed too. So Patrick Stuhlmeier was 75.03. It's uh, Jens van Grunsen with the quickest. So that puts um, James Wilson now on 10th, in 10th of the 10 clear rounds. Still to come, we've got Peter Maloney, Peter Devos from Belgium, Roger Yves Bost and uh, Daniel Doyser. Still to go, quality combinations. And Peter Devos will be rider number 45 and he'll follow Peter Maloney, who's on his way, the Irishman on this 14-year-old mare. And started riding his horse at the beginning of the year. It was fourth in a Grand Prix in March in a four-star Grand Prix. started out in this Longines Grand Prix cutting the corner from seven round to eight No problems, final fence time's going to be a good one, and a very quick time indeed, 75.27, so Peter Maloney puts his, books his passage into the next round with the third quickest run, James Wilson slips down to 11th, William Drev slips out of the top 12, Alexei Derebe, who was our first rider to go with 78.49 in terms of his time with that one penalty goal, is now in 12th. So I would have thought that uh, Bertram Allen and James Wilson might be feeling a little twitchy about the prospects of getting through to the next round, but Peter Devos, the 33-year-old on a nine-year-old flash, but uh, his horse is a highly promising one too. Peter Devos was instrumental in the key aspect of their winning team here last year. But this is the nine-year-old, world number five, in the Longines ranking. So. Feeling the clear round is equal. Well, that's not to be for Peter Devos because he won't be into the next round having flicked that through. It's quite casual. Just a touch of experience from this nine year old. coming through at the moment. Uh, just taking it easy. There's the three faces down. And one foot in the water. So in the end, Anton anticipating but it's an inexperienced horse and I think it just a little bit showed there for the nine-year-old but clearly a horse with a great future well, still to come Daniel Doyser will be the last rider to go we've got Roger Bosti will be going penultimately but next up 
is another Austrian rider. And it's Matthias Reich, 39 year old. Um, had this ride since the start of this year. He's riding Qantas, 30 year old gelding. Perhaps a little bit of a step up for this competition level. What can the 39 year old do? That quick early on. Ongoing in terms of speed into that. In the end. This part of the triple down. So it's two, eight added. to the final fence time penalties being added as well always didn't look from the start it was going to be a quick round but a couple of jumping mistakes means that Matthias Reich has finished with 12 83.66 was his with 10 penalties I should say two time penalties and two fences down including the first part of the double so we've got uh, Next to go, the 47th of 50, Philippe Amaral, four to go. And this Brazilian rider was 15th in a recent Grand Prix at St. Carlin in Switzerland. And he's riding Germanico T, a 12 year old stallion. On his way now is Philippe Amaral. Sure, the time, the time is vital now. Once the one's clear. Just sneaking inside the time, you need to be doing a bit better than that. It's a very sharp time, but disappointingly, the defense down 75.62 is a quick time, it's actually the fifth quickest, but it's one that's seen him end up with one fence down. So, still, Alexis Derube is in 12th at the moment with one penalty point, so he'll be watching with a great deal of interest these last three riders. And probably expect at least one of them to go clear. Will it be our final female competitor, Jonas Spray on Stacky's jumper, 13 year old stallion, and a 36 year old? So we've got a good mix of countries through at the moment.
Patrick Stuhlmeier. Very impressive. The German rider was 75.03. Oh, not going to be Jona as fence number three and four have gone down. So two to go. jumping on but never took off uh, and absolutely sent the top rail flying so in the end 12 so not you want to spray his day so two to go well here's one of the most experienced riders on the international circuit coming in 54 years of age she's determined to try and compete in the next two olympics and that's roger eve boss bosti his nickname and he is on a 10 year old vino depinay slightly inexperienced but the team gold medalist from rio hoping this horse might be a kind of horse he could get him back on the olympic plane tokyo of course next year so what can roger evos do here Alex is dead Bay is the one his compatriot who is sweating on what's going to happen here could he be undone by his fellow countrymen if he's clear How quick is it? He's really galloping into the water. He's just checking as the flag going up, but he's going to be well inside the time. So, Alexis Derube drops out, and one rider to go. Good round from Roger E. Bost. The 75.26 puts him into third in the standings. But, uh, oh, and he looks happy. He's sort a of breeze out as he came past me, went as if to suggest, well, that was quite hard work. It was untidy at times, but effective. Job done. So it's James Wilson who will be biting his nails. We've got 12 riders in clear inside the time. And this man on a 10-year-old, but incredibly talented 10-year-old mayor, Yasmin Bishop and Daniel Doyser is the rider world rank number four and you just feel that Daniel Doisa should find a way of getting clear but clearly well inside the time the way he'll want to ride this he'll be pretty aggressive I'm sure not here to make up the numbers that's not the Doisa way It looks 
so easy so far. Final fence check. He's got a little bit of with that, and he's absolutely nailed it with a brilliantly controlled, quick masterclass of jumping there. And he's 74.51. He's the quickest, uh, unflappable there. Just never looked anything else than that he was going quick on this mare, and she responded. And there he's through. Well, so here we go. Here's the result of the competition before going forward. I think it's 12 or 12 going through, but maybe James Wilson as clear will go through because the 50 in the class and it's 25 percent. So I don't know whether they round up or not, but we'll wait conversation. But there is 12 there. Uh, Bertram Allen, 77.36 and uh, was clear uh, Annika Alex Axelson the other clear inside the time was the young British rider James Wilson on 77.72 Alexis Derube who was first to go uh, well he finished on the time of 78.49 as we go through the rest of uh, some quick times but just one fence down along the way so uh, fascinating and it was just the way that they uh, Rider sort of clocked that you needed to be quick throughout the round uh, for uh, Simon Tarrant's course. First time he's been designing at this level, at five star level, but experienced on the national scene and on the international scene, eventing, and will be doing the pony championships. So I think he'll be pretty pleased with what he's created here a fast galloping, but it still wasn't course that needed plenty of accuracy as we look at some of the other the full leaderboard well now they're going to be preparing for the second round there are some changes to the course for this second round and uh, as they shorten it there's one or two changes the third will be jumped the other way round as will the uh, and then they go to the second which was the uh, first first time round and they go to the third and then it's more or less uh, one or two other little changes missing out the uh, fourth fence and the uh, fifth fence and then they go on the same way that they jumped prior from that from the uh, sixth fence becomes the fourth fence so it'd be very interesting to see and uh, it is all clears going through so James Wilson is through and they go in time order and James Wilson will be first to go. So uh, do join us for the second round and uh, a fascinating jump off it will be with James Wilson, all clear rounds, 13 clear rounds and some very speedy looking horses in here. So it's gonna take some winning, but could be really intriguing. And uh, with Daniel Doyser going last and uh, on the evidence of his first round, clearly the man to beat with his very talented 10 year old Yasmin Bishop. Would you join us for round two shortly?
Well, welcome back now for round two of this Longines Grand Prix. And this is the course that the 13 who've made it through will be negotiating. They jump one, uh, which was three, but they reverse it this one. Then two, which was the first fence, coming back on itself, then back to uh, the third fence, which was fence number two in the first round. Then they cut back across the arena to the upright, which was six, is now four. Then the double becomes fence five, still in the same place. Then it's back on itself to uh, the Oxa at six, which is very still the same route as before. <coughs> now just an upright here, which was where the treble was. That's number seven across for eight. And that is the finish. That is the course. And this is the start list. The 13 who've made it through, they start with the slowest of the clear rounds. All 13 were clear, and it begins with James Wilson, the young British rider, Bertram Allen, Annika Axelsen, Kevin Joachims of the Netherlands, then Latvia's uh, Kristaps Neretinksi, he won yesterday's qualifying competition. And here are the remaining with Olivier Robert, Gudrun Petit, and uh, Roger Yves Bost, very quick run, as was Patrick Stuhlmeier, but no one was quicker than Daniel Deuster, the last rider to go. What an excellent round it was, effortless, and clearly he's the man to, to beat. Well, looking back across Sopot and uh, Gdansk, that's where we are on the uh, Baltic coast here in Poland. A lovely, sunny evening, crowd in just getting a little refreshment, of course, getting a, a little bit of water sprayed on it now that everything is being prepared for this final round of this Longines Grand Prix. Well, certainly, I think it's going to take some winning. This 150,000 euro Grand Prix world-class field of riders having made it through that's why i think we're in for a really intriguing second round we saw the early riders first up just being caught a little by surprise that this course required a bit more speed but then the latter riders really knew that you had to be aggressive throughout for the first round well i'm sure on this big arena They'll be, uh, they will be going pretty quick. I think we're in for a fascinating half an hour or so of competition here to uh, determine who's going to win the Longines Grand Prix here in Sopot in Poland. We've got the Nations Cup here on Sunday, and Belgium looking to defend their title here. But some good teams here. Germany will be particularly strong. Ireland, I'm sure, will feel they've got a competitive chance of winning here. And as well as some of the other Brazil here as well. So uh, the Nations Cup will be fascinating on Sunday. But in the meantime, this Angers FIA Grand Prix will also take some winning. And uh, with Daniel Deusser, Roger E. Burst, and other talented riders here, Bertram Allen, I think we're going to see some really 
exciting and positive riding from all these 30. I think the course designer Simon Tarrant can be very pleased at getting exactly well, around 25% well, of the riders through to the next stage. It's a pretty good effort and clear inside the time. Well, as I say, it's a lovely evening here. Last bit of water just been put on the course in places in this arena. Fabulous equestrian centre it is here. Lots of investment into the infrastructure here. And it's a nice little hub of equestrian sport. And you can see the crowd enjoying and anticipating what should be a thrilling climax. Balmy Friday summer's evening in northern Poland. Disappointingly, no Polish rider making it through. Jan Bobic was close, but still, for lovers of horse sport, the quality of the riders through certainly suggests we're in for a real treat. Well, first up is an up and coming talent from Great Britain. It's James Wilson, the 11 year old. Imagine Demuse is the horse he's riding to very good effect. Had a fabulous Nations Cup the other day. Let's see what tone he can set as he just looks over the course at what will be the third fence that's where he is at the moment just checking the line from two to three and uh, he's got uh, ready 380 meters long this course is and let's see what sort of time he can set as a marker for the rest really pleased to be here as a wild card from a british perspective four-star event going on back home at Bolsworth. been a bit affected by some rigid weather in britain but i'm gather it's all well now but james here and looking to get a good finish here and further add to his growing reputation so he's on his way the first of the 13. and let's try to get an idea where a good time could be we run to three four stays clear 21 he jumped four now to the double Look at where he's through the double. He's 27 was the mark through the double. Now down the side of the arena. This is where the treble was. It's a good solid performance so far. Coming to the final fence, just checks into it now. Jumps that. And is the score for James Wilson. Feels like that that will be is beatable but still a good effort first time round now next in i'm sure he'll be pleased with that james bertram allen on uh, harley v de bishop coming in and for bertram such a good rider bertram such a kick career on this so far still relatively young but now on uh, this horse who used to be saying that it wouldn't be ridden by Nicola Philippard. Now, what can Bertram do? 46.22, the initial target to beat. And Bertram now uh, begins his round here. And how competitive Bertram is, he will be wanting to make sure he is quick in setting some sort of target. He knows what he's got to beat. through the double and he's slightly up on that now round about the site uh, but it's just a little bit up and this is where he's quick now galloping through to seven now back across to the final fence here he comes and that is somebody's had a fence down so at 44 44.49 so it shows that uh, it is 
very beatable, but that mistake just brushing that one through. So costly for Bertram Allen. Slips into uh, second spot. So James Wilson is the man to beat. 46.22. But next up, it is Annika Axelsson on WD Rossa, the Swedish rider. Very good round it was from her earlier. As she now begins her round. The 36 year old. Steadily at the moment. And a fence down there. So we round about the same sort of time for the three so far. It's on the final part where you've suddenly got a chance to gallop on to the final few obstacles where time can be gained. And she has gained time, and again, quickish, 46.15. She was quicker than James Wilson, but she is now into third spot with that uh, 46.15 and a fence down. So, one, two, three at the moment. James Wilson, Bertram Allen, Annika Axelson, and next in from the Netherlands. It's Kevin Jochems on Cristela, this 12-year-old. And Kevin coming in. Yeah, very good ride. It was just 23 years of age, is Kevin. And uh, took this ride over the back end of last year. And a hugely talented array of Dutch riders. That's what you can do. Start for the run, though. Flicks through, but stays intact now to the double. And this is definitely up on time. This is good. 46.22 is the target. I had the feeling that he's going to go inside James Wilson's time as long as he stays clear. And he's now galloping to the last. This is very quick. This will be a good marker for the rest that, that is 44 45.02 so he goes into top spot with that very calm round from kevin just kept it together no hint of a mistake and was able to gallop on through to the end so moves into the top spot kevin yockham's fourth of the 13 to go it's 45.02 ahead of james wilton and it's bertram allen and Annika Axelsson, rider number five, comes in from Switzerland. It is Faye Schock who comes in. And she is riding Quincy. And this horse, again, a little inexperienced, but uh, Faye Schock now. Ready to start his round here. through the double is the and about the point to indicate whether this is going to be quicker than Kevin Yockham's and just about the same it's going to be close this is where you can pick up time now and gallop on to the penultimate fence he's not just been able to get a free run at it but one more to go I tell you what this is going to be close 45.02 is the time and he's done it well, how good was that? For a relatively inexperienced horse, he's moved into the lead. And uh, how good was that piece of jumping from Faye Shock has come through and taken the spoils here into the lead he goes. 
Well, thank you, Mr. Christopher. No, it's, I've basically got my orders out. I do apologise, but uh, now it's Faye Shot coming in. So, Chris Tapps, Neretix, what a good round. He's been in great form. Cliff, brilliant from him, 44.03. And it's Faye Schock now coming through from Switzerland. On his way, on her way. Now, just taking it a little easy. Just using all the experience just to learn something, but uh, with uh, Christophe Nevertex, he's had such a good run so far. Moon Ray winning yesterday as well. So he's enjoyed this arena as he is Latvian. Uh, but Faye shot on the way, and she's just done a cautious run. But I tell you what, it's deceptively quick, but it's not going to be quick enough. So it's uh, 46.89 moves her into fourth spot. Should be pleased. But just had a fence down on that last one. As you can see from the uh, commentary position here, and that fence is right at the far side of the arena and low. So disappointing in the end for Fechok. Still a good round. So it's Kristaps Nerit next who leads. And now next in is Olivier Robert, the Frenchman. And Tempo de Paban. So it is 44.03 to beat. Can Olivier Robert on this 12 year old? do that he knows he's got to be full of intent from the start and the way he's begun that is clear to see but he's had a fence down so at the moment the one two three won't change which Christoph Nertnyx in the lead with Kevin Joachims and James Wilson that one fence down but it's still the minor honours. Let's see where he finishes up in terms of time. The best of the four penalties is 44.49. Oh. Uh, this waiting on the time. 44.99 is his time. So he goes just below Bertram Allen and into. Uh, and we're eight penalties actually further down the field. So next up, it's Gudrun Patit who is into the arena on Seacoast Pebbles. What a good round she put up earlier. So what can she do here? to begin in the angle there. Fine. Ah, where is she coming through the double? Shame for her. First part's down. Just a little low at it, but she was quick. Finishing time will be. Forty three point eight seven. Now that is the quickest. How disappointing is that for her having the first part of the double down? She knows that well for the remaining combinations to come through that the current leader, the steps there at next time of forty four point three is beatable. And next in is Peter Maloney. And he is riding for Nelia. The Irish rider is in. Bertram Allen went earlier with four 
penalties to his name in this second round of this Longines Grand Prix, 44.49. to be now he's galloping on now to the next is Peter and he let, just checking in no he's not going to beat the time but it's still a good effort 46.14 and he goes into third spot ahead of James Wilson. So we've got Latvia leading, then it's the Netherlands, then Ireland, then Great Britain. Those are the four clear rounds in the second round here. 44.03, the time to beat. And next up, Roger E. Bost. Well, it was a hard working clear round first time round for the experienced French rider and I'm sure he'll be wanting to work equally as hard as again to make sure that he gets Vino Despinay around in a quick time ready to begin now he's on his way that now is still going full tilt arms pumping 43 44.19 and with a fence down well frustrating for Roger E. Bost with that fence down and he goes into six spot but he was quick with that fence down at the end he was going, charging, and he looked over. He knew he hadn't got it quite right, but 44.19 wasn't going to be quite quick enough anyway because Chris Stamps is looking on course, maybe, to win his second competition here in two days. Now, from Germany, Patrick Stuhlmeier on Vadehoka de Temple, the 10-year-old. And in he comes. 44.03. Here he goes. Just a little wider there into three, so maybe be a little bit more cautious. Will he really tight to turn up the heat? I just feel he's a little bit down at the moment, but still looks. Not bad now. We're around about the same mark. Got to now kick on from here. Not sure he's let it completely go, but the horse is quick across the ground. Not going to be inside the time as they come to the final fence. Still clear. And it's going to be 47.87. Never really got the momentum going in the final part of that round, but still a good effort on a young horse for Patrick Stuhlmeier, just 10 years of age, clearly one for the future, and has put in a, and moved into fifth position in this Longines Grand Prix. So, two to go from the Netherlands. The first to go is Jens van Grunsven. As he comes... into the arena on Chica, this 12-year-old chestnut mare. Now, 
44.03. Here he comes on his way. Tight sister looks as if he's gone a little wide. So he's not throwing caution to the wind at the moment. Picking up a bit of speed here. And he's deceptively quick. Now ah, three fences to go. Looks as if it's going to be tight. I don't think he's going to get inside the time. No, he's not. As he comes to the final fence, he's going to be 45.61. Just didn't quite let the handbrake off. And so Jens van Gruzen, though, with a good round, goes into third. Behind Kristaps Nerdnyx, the Latvian sitting out in front, 44.03. On Moon Ray is our leader. But last but by no means least, he was the quickest first time round. And he made it look uh, really very, very easy. So... Here is Daniel Doyser on Yasmin Lady Bishop. He knows exactly what he's got to do. This horse is seriously talented, seriously quick, but can't afford to have a mistake. He never looked like having a fence down in the uh, first round. And just hold up the ground so here we go the final competitor in the Longines Grand Prix is the great Daniel Doyser on his way takes that on the angle now he's looking to cut a little bit of an angle there and he does now where is he coming through here looks quick at the moment through the first part and this is quick. This is a very quick. It was about 24 seconds through. And at the moment, he's making this look a masterclass. He may even have a bit of time in hand here. He, he drops the final one. And I'll tell you what, I think he's going to absolutely smash it here. He has absolutely ripped the field apart here with a calm, controlled, brilliant round of jumping. He made it look so effortless throughout and has won with a time of 42.87 completely smashing the field there to come through well over a second ahead of the next place rider who was brilliant i've been consistent over this week here in Sopot, kristaps naretnik with his time but then kevin Joachim's in third and jens van grunsum in fourth and there's confirmation of the result here daniel doyser brilliantly wins the Longines Grand Prix, 42.87. The Latvian Moonray couldn't, and Kristaps Neretniks couldn't follow up, but still they can be mighty pleased. Jo Kevin Joachim, then it's Jens van Groots, Peter Maloney, James Wilson, and looking at the remaining ones, Annika alsen Feishrock, and then Olivier Robert. Those were the ones who went through to the jump off, the second round of this competition. But Daniel Doyser, who was last to go in the first round, last to go in the jump off, he showed all his experience on this very talented 10 year old mare, and she just made it look so easily. A wonderful performance from Daniel Doyser. Now we look at the other placings from the uh, ones from the first round, but I have to say it's a joy to watch Daniel Doyser in that kind of form um, because he just does. Make it look so unruffled and so easy, yet I'm sure it can't be just like that because the way he does it, he made positive moves earlier on and even through the double he was what he looked like he was two or three seconds ahead and he knew he had a bit of time in hand over the final stages so he didn't actually have to really go completely flat out. So that's what was even more impressive as we confirm the final placings in this the Longines Grand Prix as they ready the arena for the presentation ceremony hope you've enjoyed the uh, uh, Grand Prix coverage
We will be back for the Nations Cup. I believe it starts 10.30 local time here in Poland. And will Belgium come out on top? Well, Germany with the Daniel Deusser, who will be the heart of their Nations Cup team, I'm sure, will take some beating if they continue to show that sort of form. But with the Belgians, the Dutch, the Irish, I'm sure they have plenty of expectations of uh, pressurising uh, the Germans who will, will start, as is more often not the case as favourite. But all the same, I think we could begin with a thrilling Nations Cup competition in this wonderful part of Poland here in Sopper. But uh, a staggeringly brilliant performance from Daniel Deusser, I think, has set the tone for the weekend. So I, for one, am looking forward to the Nations Cup on Sunday. Hope you've enjoyed our coverage, but as I say, we'll be back. The presentation ceremony will continue to be shown here as Daniel Deusser collects another Grand Prix prize.
tam dawać. Let's welcome our honorable guests, which are here with us, and we will present the prizes to our winner and place buyers. So, welcome Lenji, representative, PR manager of Lenji, Poland, Ms. Katarzyna Sosinska. FBI representative, member of the FBI board, Mr. Alfred Bull. Witamy serdecznie, reprezentanta Międzynarodowej Komunikacji Europejskiej, członka Zarządu Międzynarodowej Komunikacji Europejskiej, pan Ferenc Bola. OC representative, president of the Hydrogen Circle, Ms. Kara Kazerowska Rachkiewicz and Agata Jacicka as a show director. Measure of support, Mr. Jacek Karnowski. And of course, as well as Vice President of Polish Industrial Federation, Ms. Ivona Matija. Let's work on an engineering with us, the prize in the ceremony. Mr. Victor. The Victor is where he's coming in. Go around. DJ Mori, Oliva. Mr. Victor. Go across the way of Chitka, Vesco Hilton. Mr. Chitka. Second place for the Netherlands as well, Christo and Kenyo Prince. Second place for the Netherlands for Christo Perez and Moon Wade. 
the best dress for the best rider of our Rosie Grand Prix. Of course, a huge congratulations are going also to a member of the FBI Foreign Judge Chief, the so called Mr. Alfred Bell from Switzerland. Let's join him. You are welcome. All senior representatives, Maya Kozlowska, Rashkiewicz, President of Hyperdrive Soko, Ms. Agata Majewska, Show Director, also Ms. Senior Representative and Manager of Soko, Mr. Jacek Kapanowski, and Polish Equestrian Federation Vice President, Ms. Ivona Maciea. Dziękuję Dear best audience in the world, dear audience from Sokos, give him one more applause. This is Daniel Gosa. Let's go to the second place. The second place is going to watch here for Moon Ray and Christoph Nerekis. The Rudimista representing the world of Christoph Nerekis. Let's go for the fourth position. Fourth position is going as well to Netherlands and now Phil Chica and Jensen Gusen. And then we go on with the fifth place. Fifth place is going to Ireland for Ornella and Peter Mori. As you can see, the, at the Glasgow ceremony, we had almost only men. So we decided to give a special prize for Ella Lidley for our best lady of Longi Grand Prix, which is representing Belgium. She finished at the eighth position with Seiko Pedersen. Good luck, She's wearing a beautiful, beautiful jewel from Paris Design. Congratulations! Well, huge thanks to our dear guests. Of course, huge congratulations to all players who are there. It was such an amazing day here at the Lotto CSIA Five Stars in Stockholm. And now is the right time for the Lotto Honor. And the winner will leave now a Lotto Honor. Give an applause for Daniel Dostra.